Okay, now in this video we're going to be kind of expanding on what we previously have done. So instead of setting up our player just for a weapon, we're going to create a vehicle. We're going to add well, the various components required, such as fuel, wheels, battery, and the spark plugs. So we're essentially going to be spawning in just a vehicle that's fully functional. We're going to spawn in in our player's location just for this tutorial, but we're going to set up the class and the constructor so that you can pass in whatever position you want and it'll spawn on that location. And the same thing goes for the vehicle. You can choose whatever type, whatever class name you want to pass in, it'll spawn it, well, as long as you type it in correctly. So, as for now, we're going to go ahead and create another .c file. So, go into our scripts folder, copy and paste setup player, and rename it to setup vehicle. So, it'll be setup vehicle.c. We're going to go ahead and empty it. Now, on our init.c, we want to go ahead and copy our first include line just so we don't have to type it back out. We're going to add our well, newly made file, so setup vehicle.c. Now we want to go ahead and open that file. Just like so. Go ahead and save it, and we are ready to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a create vehicle class. So class create vehicle. Don't know why I keep doing that out of habit for some reason. Alright, so now that we have our class, we want to make a dedicated variable just specific to the vehicle so that we can do whatever we want from anywhere pretty much. So the type is car. We're just going to call it vehicle. Now, with what we're going to be doing, we don't need to access the vehicle variable from outside of this class, so we can go ahead and make it private. Now, what making it private does, our const anything that we have inside of this class function-wise, like void my function, this function is able to alter vehicle, this variable here. But if we try to do, let's say we make an object like we did here with setup default player weapon, let's say p object was pointing to our create vehicle class. If we did you know, p object dot vehicle wouldn't be able to modify it or access it or anything like that because this variable is private. So any functions inside of the class can modify it, but anything outside of the class cannot modify it. So that's how it is in other languages. I'm assuming it's the same here. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make a constructor, and inside the constructor we're going to create the vehicle. And we what we wanted to do is we wanted to take in both the name of the vehicle as well as the position of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and make our constructor. Void create vehicle. Now it wants the name of the vehicle. That's going to be a string. So string vehicle name. Then it wants the position. Now the position would be a should be just vector POS. POS being position. Alright, so now we can go ahead and create the vehicle. So we're going to do vehicle equals get game dot create object. Now you can see it takes in multiple things. First thing is going to be a string. That's going to be, well, the class name of the vehicle. So we're going to do ours, which is, sorry, vehicle name. Second thing is the position. In our case, it's EOS, because we pass that in. Create it locally, which by default it's false. And by default the AI is false. And by default, that in the physics, well, that's automatically set to true. So that's is actually all that we need to pass into the create object function, or method. I think, it would, I think it would be a method in this case. I don't know. So now this should spawn in our vehicle here when we create a vehicle. Well, an object off of this class. 
So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So create vehicle. I'm going to be doing the hatchback, so I'm just going to call it my hatchback, and you'll see why here in a minute. Equals new create vehicle. Now the two things that it passes in, they were the name. That's it's off. Could be just off road. Yep, off road hatchback. And the position. We're going to be spawning on the position of our player since that's something we have easily accessible. And for the tutorial, it's going to make it a lot easier. So what we can do is player dot get location. Player dot get position. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> so that should send in our coordinates to our vector called POS here, and should create our vehicle. So let's go ahead and file save and give it a try. Yep, as you can see, we are in the vehicle, but has no parts, so it's not even going to start. Same thing, no wheels. It's just the base model, essentially. Right, so now what we can do, we can make a function to add all the components we need. Well, first we're going to create a function that adds fuel. So we're going to do void add, oh my, my voice cracked, vehicle fuel. Now I wanted to take in the amount, so oh, it's just going to be an integer, and we'll just call it amount, or better yet, fuel amount. So we can do vehicle dot, that's probably right, fill. Now you can see what it takes in, car fluid, the name of the fluid, and then the amount, which I'm sorry, that's a float, not an integer. So car fluid dot fuel, then the amount, which in our case is fuel amount. So that should add the correct amount of fuel to our vehicle. So by the way, this ranges from zero to a thousand with all fluid levels, I believe. Now the second thing that we want to do is add the vehicle components. So we can make another function for that. So void add vehicle components. For now, we don't need to take pass in anything. So we need to add in wheels, battery, and spark plug. Those are individuals. So for example, if we add a wheel, it's only going to add one wheel to the vehicle. So we need to go through and we need to add four or however many the vehicle requires. So we can just do that by doing vehicle dot get inventory dot create attachment now in here is where we need the attachment names now in our case ours is going to be a hatchback so I'm going to go ahead and grab those real quick so I find it vehicles wheeled big cpp all right so we're going to do car Yep, right there, it's called car wheel. So we're going to copy this four more times. Now we want to add the battery and the spark plug. That should be car battery and spark plug. Is it not? That's spark plug. Okay, so now when we file save with, oh, we got to call this first. Actually, we got to call all these. So now that we have our hatchback, this hatchback is going to be our attachment to the vehicle. So we can do whatever we want with it. So if we want to add fuel, we do my hatchback dot add vehicle fuel. See the amount. So we're just going to do a thousand for max. Now we want to add all the components such as the wheels. So if my hatchback dot add vehicle components. 
doesn't take in anything. Now if we file save and restart, we should have a fully fueled vehicle with all the necessary components to run. So let's see if it starts, which it does, which it does not, or it does apparently, but we do not have the wheels, but we do have the engine components, so that means that's added, so I'm assuming it's just typo in the class name. I don't think it was anything specific. Hatch back hatchback wheel, seriously. Okay, well anyways. I'll just probably actually leave that in just for example. You can get a lot of what you want to find just simply by typing what you might think it's called. So as you can see there by my stupidity. So let's hop out of the vehicle and see if we have wheels, which we do. Two, three, and four. Make sure the vehicle runs. And as you can see, everything's working as intended. I like that animation. <laughs> I haven't actually played AZ yet since 0.63 even came out, so. Okay, that covers everything there. Let's move on to part two. This will kind of really help to neaten this up. So, what we're doing in part two and our components, well, for all these, such as the four wheels and the two. Uh, well, yeah, two other things. We're going to be adding more to that later, such as the hood. We're going to put those in an array. And as you can see, all these are strings. So it's going to be a T string array. It's going to be the type. And we're going to use a for loop to increment through the array to add the components we want to the vehicle. Now this is where my hatchback, the name, kind of comes into play. Because we know what vehicle the name is going to be as correlated by our object name, we will know what type of components to add to it. So if we want to go ahead and make our array, let's do that right up here. It's going to be called T string array. We're going to call it hatch back components. There we go. So that's going to be Containing four wheels, just like so. One car battery. And one spark plug. Also notice these are not case sensitive, so if you had everything lowercase, that works just the same. But keep it nice and neat. May as well use capitals. Okay, so we have our array right here. So we need to set up our add vehicle components function to take in the array. So we're going to call it, just like before, T string array. We're just going to call it parts array, or parts array. Now we need to make a for loop. So if you're familiar with damn near any language, you should know how to use one. So the syntax for it in this case is same as C sharp, C++, Java, so on. So, or we're going to do int i, set it to zero. So this is going to be where we set our variable, which can also be nothing. If we didn't have one, or if we had one up here to use instead. And we want to do, for the condition for it to run, we want i to be less than however many elements are inside of parts array. So we're going to do i is less than parts array dot count. So if we have, have one, two, three, four, five, six, this is the same as saying while i is less than six, we're going to continue to run the loop. 
So our last setup is going to increment i by 1. So when this loop runs once, i is going to go from 0 to 1. When it runs the second time, it's going to go from 1 to 2. It's going to keep doing that all the way until it hits 6. Once it hits 6, it's going to jump out of the loop. Well, because i is less than 6. In our case, if we had another option here, let's say a hood, this is automatically going to do i is less than 7. So it's dynamic to whatever we pass into it. That's what we want. So in our array here, we're going to do vehicle dot get inventory dot create attachment then the attachment when we want it to be arts array and we want it to be for value i. Go ahead and move all of those because that's set up in our t string array and we want to pass that in. So hatch back components. Go ahead and save it, give it a try. And with any luck, we should have a hatchback that has all the components added just like before. Yep. And as you can see there, four wheels. I hope. Yep, four wheels. That's new. Didn't know that was a thing. Make sure it fires up. Which it does. Just as intended. So just to kind of show you an example of what I meant by well, this section in the for loop. We're going to add a hood. This should be the same, I would hope. This would just be Neva hood. I'm going to actually check and see. Hatch back. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Neva Hood. Oh, it's already saved. Click restart. And no hood. So I'm just going to assume that that's the wrong class name. But instead of going through and looking for it, it should kind of make sense as to where I was going with that. So if that was the right class name, there should be a hood right up here covering well, the engine bay. So hopefully all this made sense and was quite easy to follow. And I will see you for the next one.